Hello. In this video, we're going to examine the question of how we know that induction works, how we know that the proof by induction will suffice to prove uh, a claim. Now, we've seen so far in the class uh, a couple different uh, types of induction. We know that the ordinary induction uh, is used to prove statements like, like these that we've seen in class. Um, we know that in order to do an induction proof, what you're supposed to do is verify that your statement is true in the base case that first value of, uh, of n that for which Sn is claimed to be true. And then you're supposed to prove that for any k past that value a, if Sk is true, then Sk plus 1 should be true as well. Now just uh, verifying those things in the course of your proof is supposed to be enough to show that for all n greater than or equal to a, Sn should be true. Now we went a bit, went a little bit further. Uh, we showed that for other statements, maybe ordinary induction wasn't enough to give you a proof but you could modify your induction statement a little bit in this way. Again, you would suppose, or you would verify that SA was true, and sometimes it was necessary to prove a few other base cases as well. But here's where you modify the, uh, the argument. Instead of showing that SK implies SK plus one, you showed that if SK and all the previous statements were true, then SK plus one would be true as well and you were allowed to use any particular combination of these previous statements to prove that the SK plus one statement is true. Now this was strong induction, and uh, we told you that proving these things would be enough to, to conclude that your statement was true for all integers past your given value a. Now how do we know though that this outline suffices to prove the for all statement that we claim it does? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now to, uh, to understand this, we need to make a definition. We're going to say that a set S of real numbers is well ordered if every non-empty subset of S has a least element. All right, so we have some examples here of sets. Uh, the ones on the left are well ordered, the ones on the right are not. And to see why the sets on the left are well ordered, uh, we'll just imagine taking a non-empty subset. Now 3, 4, 5, 6 is, uh, is a set, and it does have a, a least element, certainly, 3. But remember, the definition doesn't talk about whether S has a least element. It talks about whether every non-empty subset of S has a least element. So not only do we need to check whether the set as a whole has a least element, but we also need to imagine taking any non-empty subset. Say, for instance, the subset uh, consisting of 4 and 6, and ask, does that subset have a least element? And the set consisting of four and six does, it's, it's the number four. Uh, for, as another example, if we were to take this set, which is not defined in terms of listing its numbers, it's just defined in terms of a description, we need to ask ourselves, if we were to take a non-empty subset of this, like say we were to take the subset of this consisting of all the numbers in that set that are even, would there always have to be a least element? And the answer is yes. In the case of the even elements of this set, the negative uh, 98 would be the least element of that particular subset. Now, on the other hand, some sets are not well ordered. If we take a look at the interval from three to six, and we imagine uh, taking every non-empty subset and deciding whether uh, or not it has a least element, you'll see that we run into a set right away, namely the set itself, that's a, that's a non-empty subset, that does not have a least element. You'll notice that there is no smallest number in this portion of the real line. Uh, 3.1 is in that set, but it's not the smallest because you could take 3.001, but that's not the smallest either because you can always find a number that is closest to three. However, three itself is not in the interval, so there is no smallest element in that set. And so uh, since this interval is a subset of itself, it, uh, it doesn't have a least element. Uh, that means that the interval is not well ordered. Okay, in a similar fashion, the interval from negative 99 to 99, including the endpoints, is also not well ordered. Even though the set as a whole has a least element, negative 99 is in the set and it is the smallest thing in the set. Remember, we need to check whether every non-empty subset has a least element. And since this interval contains the interval from three to six, as a subset, and this interval, as we just got done saying, doesn't have a least element, 
That means that the interval from negative 99 to 99 is not well ordered. Similarly, the set of integers is not well ordered. Uh, you can just look at the set itself. It has no least element. There is no smallest integer. All right, now as you look at these examples, the ones on the left were all finite. And it makes you wonder whether, in fact, any infinite set ever could be well ordered. Well, what about the natural numbers? The numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, do they form a well ordered set? Now, uh, it turns out that answering that question is, is uh, harder than it might seem. Uh, it, it's, it certainly seems true. Nobody's been able to point to a subset of the natural numbers and say, aha, that has no smallest element. But uh, on the other hand, you can't really prove it from some of the other axioms we normally assume about our, our positive integers. And so what we're going to do is take it as an axiom, what we call the well-ordering principle. And the well-ordering principle simply says the set n of all natural numbers is well-ordered. Now again, this is something that we haven't proved. It's something that certainly seems reasonable and we don't suspect it's false, but we're going to just take it as something that's true. We have to start somewhere in our proving, and, and this is one of the places we start. Now this well-ordering principle, believe it or not, is going to be what makes induction work. Because this well-ordering principle allows us to prove a corollary, which says that not only these positive integers, but also any set that consists of all integers past a certain point is well-ordered. So to say that again, A is just going to be just some random integer, like negative 22. And what we're claiming is that the set of all integers from negative 22 up to infinity, uh, ex excluding infinity, of course, that set is well-ordered. Now, if you like, you can think about why that has to be true once you accept the well-ordering principle. We're just going to take it as true for the purposes of this video. Now, with that lemma in hand, we're going to prove the following theorem. This is a theorem about theorems. What we're saying is that if Sn is a, a claim that depends on the variable n, and a is an integer, and you want to prove that Sn is true for all n greater than or equal to a, it's enough to do what induction says you should do. It's enough to uh, prove that the statement SA is true, and then to prove that for all k greater than or equal to a, if SK is true, then SK plus 1 is true. This theorem says that if you prove these things, then you know that this is going to be true. And so it works. Induction would work as a proof. Now, before we jump into that, we'll mention that um, we're just going to prove this statement, which talks about ordinary induction. If you wanted to prove that strong induction does what we say it does, you would just need to replace these bullet points with the hypotheses for strong induction. But as you'll see, the proof we're about to run into uh, will work just as well for strong induction as it does for, for ordinary induction. So how do we prove this if-then statement? We're saying if you do the induction outline, then you will really have proved uh, the statement you claim to prove. Well, we're going to prove this theorem about theorems um, using a proof by contradiction. So we're going to um, start, because this is an if-then proof, a proof by contradiction will start by assuming that the hypothesis is true, or in other words, we're going to suppose that these statements that go into an induction proof are true, yet we'll also assume that the conclusion is false. Okay, so we'll suppose that it's not true that Sn holds for every n greater than or equal to a. Now, we're he headed for a contradiction. That's our goal. And how are we going to get that? Well, here's how, and here's, well, here's where well ordering will come into play. We're going to suppose, or we're going to say rather, if this part is not true, if Sn is not necessarily true for every n greater than or equal to a, then it must be the case that Sn is false for some n greater than or equal to a. And so what we'll do is define C to be the set of all integers past a for which Sn is false. C might stand for counterexample. Now, because we're supposing it's not true that Sn is always true, that means that there must be some n where Sn is false, so C is going to be non-empty. Now, on the other hand, the set of all integers past a is a well-ordered set. And C is a certain collection of those integers. So C is a non-empty subset of a well-ordered set. And the definition of well-ordered implies then that C has to have a smallest element in it. Call it N0. 
So n0 is the first integer for which sn is supposed to be false. Now, because we uh, are assuming that sa is true, that means that n0 cannot be a. It's got to be bigger than a. Now, what that means is that n0 minus 1 is at least a. But then on the other hand, S n0 minus 1 has to be true because n0 was the smallest number for which sn was false. However, knowing that S n0 minus 1 is true and also knowing that uh, S n0 minus 1 has to imply S n0 is true, that tells us that actually S n0 must be true as well. However, this is just a contradiction because n0 belonged to C. We suppose that S n0 was, was false. So having arrived at this contradiction, we uh, conclude that C has to be empty. Or in other words, if you do uh, prove the bullet points above, then you have in fact proven that for all n greater than or equal to a, Sn is true. So induction works.